Hello, we are looking at a gross specimen that comprises part of the stomach and duodenum, the pancreas, the omentum, and the spleen. So it's actually easier to orientate when we turn this specimen around, and now we're looking from the posterior surface. This on the left is the spleen, and this is the pancreas. This is part of the stomach, and this is the omentum. And on this surface, we can actually appreciate the duodenal mucosa. So this is an example of acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. Acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis occurs due to inappropriate release of the pancreatic enzymes. And if you remember, the pancreatic enzymes include lipases, elastases, proteases, and the causes for this inappropriate release could be due to obstruction, for example, in the instance of stones or tumours or even parasitic organisms. Enzymatic release can also occur because of toxic damage to the acina cells of the exocrine pancreas. And causes of this in turn would include toxins like alcohol, certain drugs, viral infections and also a host of other causes. So grossly, what we would see is as a result usually of enzymatic destruction of tissue as well as necrosis. So the pancreas itself, the parenchyma, would be necrotic. And in this instance, uh, we see actually mostly hemorrhage, these darkish areas. The hemorrhage is due to enzymatic destruction of the blood vessel walls. Uh, the elastase enzymes, they will digest blood vessel walls which are rich in elastic fibers. There's also swelling of the pancreas, and this is due to edema because of the release of inflammatory cytokines from a lot of leukocytes that come into this area, as well as from damaged tissues. And in addition, there's also fat necrosis. So, for example, if we zoom into this area, we can see a number of these chalky, whitish deposits. These are actually soaps. And this is formed because when lipases act on lipid-containing cells, for example, in the omentum or the peripancreatic fat, there is release of fatty acids from the cells. And these combine with calcium in a process called saponification to form soaps. If we examine this microscopically, it can help us to understand the process better. So this is a low magnification view. We can see that in this area, there is still some preservation of the lobular architecture of the pancreas. In this area, the pancreas is more badly affected. There are these reddish areas of hemorrhage and also the whole parenchyma looks blurry or ill-defined and this entire area is necrotic. On a higher magnification view, we can see there is extensive necrosis of the pancreatic parenchyma. We no longer can see any of the nuclei of any of the elements, including the exocrine, acini, the ducts, and also the endocrine components. Again, there is some hemorrhage over here. In this high magnification view, we can see that the parenchyma is extensively necrotic. We no longer can see individual nuclei. These are all parenchymal cells of the pancreas. In summary, this is an example of acute hemorrhagic pancreatitis. There are several features we can see. The pancreas itself is swollen or edematous, and it is markedly hemorrhagic with these blackish areas. The parenchyma also shows extensive necrosis. Around the pancreatic tissue, the peripancreatic fat shows chalky deposits of soaps, and this is because of release of fatty acids and combination with calcium. 